Please remember the views and opinions expressed by this show or any other show on DV Radio and its guests are strictly those of said individuals and do not reflect those of the DV Radio staff nor the staff of dysfunctional veterans. Tear down this wall. Very nice words, but happens to be wrong. Welcome to the Marquee Dirty 30 here on DVRadio.net. Welcome, 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 welcome. I am so glad you got here to listen in tonight. Hear what I got to say, I guess. (laughs) Uh, Last week's show about, uh, what was it? Uh, Racism in the military. You guys showed up. You showed out. And you gave me some great response and feedback, so I will be doing a follow-up show on the racism within the military versus racism in the civilian sector. Great topic. So, tonight, I've been teasing it all week, we are going to talk about this border wall and also this uh, government shutdown. Now, I know some of you are like, oh, I've been hearing it all week. I don't want to hear that mess no more. Trump is doing fantastic. Mexico still going to pay for the wall. This shutdown is only a conspiracy by the Democrats. And, and, and no, no, no. Let's, let's just clear some air here, people. Let's just listen. Now, the reason I want to talk about this is because it does affect us veterans in some way. Now, uh, out of the 80,000 that are affected by the government, uh, 800,000, let me let me correct myself there, 800,000, around 25% of the employees uh, uh, are affected by the uh, government shutdown. Some of them are veterans. I have some on my friends list on Facebook. Some I've served with that are now veterans who are working for uh, areas like the Department of Defense or Homeland Security, and they are affected by this government shutdown. So it's something that we should talk about. Something that we should talk about. So let's talk about it. But I want to first, I want to start with talking about the border wall. Now, I wrote a little piece on uh, the DV Marquee page, which you can find at DV Marquee on Facebook. Uh, I wrote a little piece on it, just simply talking about how the wall, all right, whether it's a good idea or a bad idea, and how we can get out of this government shutdown. Now, one of the key ideas that I have for this border wall is that it can't just be a solid wall stretching from end to end. I mean, that'd be ridiculous to have a great wall of the USA just sitting there on the Mexican border. Now, the reason I say it's ridiculous is because guess what? Just because you have a wall doesn't mean someone's not going to come kick it down. Now, (laughs) is it going to be a 10-foot thick wall, a 30-foot thick wall? Is it going to penetrate the earth and go six feet deep so they can't tunnel underneath it? Uh, Is it going to be a high-tech surveillance wall that includes drones, cameras, uh, 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 dogs, you know, things of that nature? Is it going to include lasers, you know, laser beams, lasers? What kind of wall is this going to be? We don't know. So that's what we have to speculate. Now, some people are just saying, oh, it's just going to be a big old steel wall with barbed wire, razor wire on top, and it's going to have snipers every 15 feet so that when one of them Mexicanos come across that border there, they're just going to get sniped, and they're going to keep trying to run and jump over the wall and get snagged up in the barbed wire. No, it's not going to be that kind of wall, people. It's not going to be a wall with... With, 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 with mines in front. It's not going to be the demilitarized zone that they have over there in Korea. Not going to be that. All right? It's going to be a wall, hopefully, that has a QRF force, a quick reactionary force, okay? Like we had in Iraq and Afghanistan when something pops off, the QRF goes off, right? So this is what, we, this is what I propose about this wall here. Yeah, let's build some, you know, structural uh, uh, elements out there. But let's also have some highly trained, highly motivated individuals who will quickly react to the siding or the breach of the wall or the near breach of the wall. Uh, you know, someone gets within, let's say, 50 feet of the wall. Then, you know, camera sees them. The quick reactionary force goes out. And what happens? They go and they wait. Okay. They don't try to cross the wall and apprehend them on the Mexican side of the wall. We have to wait until they try to cross it to America. Right. I mean, that's what we have to do. And then we apprehend them there and then just quickly deport them back to Mexico, quickly deport them back to the country in which they came. And the reason I'm saying quickly deport them, because right now we have a deportation process that takes forever, it seems like. You know, you have to send them down to Guantanamo Bay or to some prison somewhere. You got to do all this paperwork. You got to just put them on a bus, drive them back, (laughs) you know, drop them off. 
hey, if we see you back in this country, we're going to lock you up for a long time. All right? I mean, that's the way you have to do it. That's just the way we're going to have to do it when it comes to this particular hot button issue. Now, with the border wall, President Trump said that Mexico, this is how he campaigned, Mexico is going to build this wall. Mexico is going to pay for this wall. That's what he said. That is what he said. Now, I don't know if he was trying to say it as in Mexico is going to pay for this wall. You know, not like real money and cash, but, you know, they're going to get a wall and they're going to they're going to they're going to rule the day. They mess with America with this border wall. Let's let's hear a little clip from the president talking about Mexico paying for this wall. I want you to hear from his own mouth so that you guys won't be like, oh, you know, well, he recanted that and said, let's just hear what the president said while he was campaigning about this border wall. I will build a great, great wall and I will have Mexico pay for that wall. All right. Now, this Thursday, this Thursday, the president said this about Mexico paying for the wall. I would say Mexico is going to pay for it. Obviously, I never said this, and I never meant they're going to write out a check. You've just crossed over into the Twilight Zone. Now, I never understood how we were going to force Mexico to pay for this border wall. I never understood the concept. I never knew the plan. I never knew how we were going to do it. Were we going to take over Mexico and just build a wall and then give it back to Mexico? I don't know. I don't know how we were going to do it, but... The president promised that Mexico was going to pay for the wall. Well, it's not going to happen. And we see that now with this government shutdown, which is based off of he wants five point something billion dollars to build a wall. And the Democrats who control the House do not want to give him the five point something billion dollars to build the wall. Now, I have been reading that they want to do a compromise and have him reinstate the DACA, the Dreamers Act, for some funding for the wall. And then I've seen things where the president said, well, I'm just going to declare a state of emergency and use the one point six billion that I, I saw. I read it somewhere. I don't know where I don't don't quote me on that one. But he's going to read. The, he's going to use the one point six billion uh, emergency funding to build a wall, uh, declare a state of emergency to build a wall. Uh, and this has all led to this to the longest Government shutdown in history. That is what I've been reading, that this is the longest government shutdown in history. Uh, might not be. I mean, think about it. Uh, 1776, we didn't have a government, and we had been a, I mean, <laughs> I'm just playing. So, now, with that being said, so we've talked about this border wall here. Border wall. We've talked about it between Mexico and the United States. So, why haven't we reached an agreement in restarted the government with funding. Well, I'll tell you why. This is a big old pity party for both political parties in the United States. The Democrats want something. President Trump wants something. And the Senate is just stuck there in the middle. Like right now, the old guys in the Senate are like, oh, my goodness. Can we please just get this done? I mean, if you look at it, uh, <laughs> Mitch McConnell is pulling out the last little bit of his hairs and he is like, what is going on here? Um, I was reading, okay, the president could veto the bill. You know, this is just an appropriations bill, people. This is just a spending bill. He can veto it, but then Congress can override it and it will still become law, you know, the spending bill of the year. Uh, so why, do, why don't they do that? Well, simply because the Senate is Republican, the House is Democratic, the president is Republican. And for some reason, I don't get this. I hate it with a passion. Why do we always have to determine someone based off of their political background? Like when you look at the Supreme Court justices, the same thing when Brett Kavanaugh was being uh, appointed and, and confirmed by the Senate to be a Supreme Court justice. Everywhere I read Brett Kavanaugh, comma, Republican, comma. He is a justice on the Supreme Court. He is not politically based. He should be only focused on the law, the law of the land, the Constitution, not whether or not he is a Republican and or Democrat. He should be looking at the law, the letter of the law. And that's the one thing that I believe that people in the House, people in the Senate and the president should start doing. 
They should start looking at the law, looking at the United States, not Finland, not Netherlands, not South Africa, not the Congo, not Australia, not France. Look at the United States, okay, and determine what we need done here. What is precedent here? Is a border wall precedent? I mean, not really in my book. It's something that we could use, yes, but it's not one of the things that we need here in America. So why aren't we hiring homeless veterans, placing them in a position to either get cleaned up or uh, back on their feet by giving them a stable job to secure the border of the United States? Why haven't we put out a flyer or Facebook ad or, 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 or news conference saying, hey, we are hiring veterans of the United States military, all branches, any former police officers to come and secure the border? That's what we're going to do. So that way we could we could clear up homeless veteran this right there. Uh, I think I just made it up. Veteran this is that a word? I just made it up. Whatever. Veteran this. We, we can clear up homeless veteran this right there if we do that. OK, I know it sounds simple. It's way simpler said than done, but still, it's an idea. And right now, I don't think anybody's throwing ideas out there. Okay, okay. So when we get back from the break, what's going to happen is um, I'm going to tell you what some people said to me on Facebook pertaining to this topic. All right? And then I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to talk about it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see what they say makes sense. Let's see. All right, so you've been listening to the Marquee Dirty 30 here on DVRadio.net. Do not go anywhere. Radio. At the DV Farm, located in Gilson, New Hampshire, we aim to provide homeless veterans with the tools required to successfully reintegrate back into society. But we can't do it alone. In order to maintain our independence and focus on our veterans, DVFarm.org does not receive any financial assistance from the state or federal government. We operate entirely on the generosity of our public donations. To make a tax-deductible donation or simply learn more about our mission, visit DVFarm.org. We cannot continue the mission without you. Mean a thing if it ain't got that swing. And welcome back to the Marquee Dirty 30 here on DVRadio.net, WDVR. I am your host, Marquee Davis, and today we're talking about the border wall and the government shutdown. Now, let's continue with the government shutdown real quick, all right? So, we have the government that is not being funded. Why? Well, simply because, simply because... We're having temper tantrums. We already said that. That's what's going on right now. Um, <clears throat> but let's let's read some of the comments that uh, you know I received regarding this government shutdown border wall thing. You know what I'm saying? So this is one I got from James. All right, it says uh, both sides are going to have to give somewhat. That's true. But Trump is so damn stubborn. He is, and so he may not budge. Uh, there was numerous opportunities to increase border security. A lot voted for uh, this during the Obama administration. Uh, the Democrats, uh, both the far right and the far left politicians suck. They do. They absolutely do. They have hidden agendas, people. Hidden agendas. Well, let's go back to the comment. Um, the, the Democrats are refusing to budge this time purely because of Trump. That is absolutely right. Not because of the interest of the people of America. He then goes on to say that this is a division. It's what politics has come has has become here in this country, America, North North America, the United States. All right, a division, not only between politicians, but you see it everywhere. All right, if my guy loses and your guy wins, then you're automatically an asshole. <laughs> News stations aren't even news anymore. They really aren't. They're all political opinion pieces. We don't need political opinion pieces in the news. I want to know what the traffic looks like, what the weather is going to be, where the most recent homicides have occurred, and things of that nature. I could care less what Fox 5, uh, Quintessa uh, Moore has to say about President Trump. All right? Or about the Democratic uh, leader Nancy Pelosi. I could care less what your opinion is. Tell me the news. All right. Even CNN 
has now become nothing but a political news station. Fox News is nothing but a political news station where they'll sometimes trinkle in a little bit of those, uh, you know, feel good stories. You know, oh, today we had a puppy and the puppy was just so beautiful. It was a Oxford English puppy. Oh, uh, just a beautiful, beautiful breed. And I'm so excited to share this with you guys today. Uh, it's things of that nature. OK, they try to trick us. They try to trick us. All right. And so then I had another uh, uh, conversation uh, with a guy named David. OK, David. Now, he says that he doesn't believe five billion dollars is enough to build a wall as big as they are proposing. Uh, from what uh, I've read, it would cost sixty five billion dollars today just to build the ball, the, the, the ball. <laughs> what am I thinking about? The wall <laughs> of China. You understand what I'm saying? Just to build a wall of China, it would take $65 billion today to build that wall. All right. Now, he then goes on to say that he thinks that, you know, why is Trump pushing this wall so hard? Why do we have a government shutdown that has lasted this long? What is the secret motivation behind the building of this wall? Is it actually the security of the United States and stopping illegal immigration? Or is it because, you know, how some people say uh, Bush and Cheney had a vested interest in the invasion of Iraq as opposed to attacking Saudi Arabia or other countries that may have had uh, a real uh, uh, impact and influence over the 9-11 attacks? So what is the real motivation behind the building of this wall? Hmm. He then goes on to talk about, you know, the 2020 election and things of that nature. And I don't want to get into that because who knows what's going to happen in 2020. But <clears throat> so those are two two people who uh, I spoke with. And I just wanted to read their comments real quick on air so that you guys can see, you know, the feel of how some these these two guys are veterans, how some veterans are feeling towards this border wall. Now, the government shutdown, OK, to me, as I said before, is just a big temper tantrum between between the political parties. Now, if you don't know my stance on this, yes, I did vote for Donald Trump. I said it. I don't, I don't care. Yes, I'm an African American male who voted for Donald Trump. People ask me all the time, why? Why did you vote? Why did you vote for Trump? Oh my God! Don't you know he's a racist? Well, let's look at it this way. So, before he started running for politics and doing all these things, he was, you know, they had a song about him. You know, up like Donald Trump. It was a rap song, a rap song about President Donald Trump. Okay. He was friends with Snoop Doggity Dog and Jay Z. You seen him in pictures with Puff Diddy, the Pop, Puff Daddy, you know, Diddy, all of those people, rappers. You know, you saw him. No one thought Donald Trump was a racist. No one said these things until he started running for president and until he started, you know, uh, 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 until he became the president. I mean, Donald Trump was a public figure, he had his own television show. Anything that could have been said negatively about him should have been said years ago. But now, all of a sudden, he's a bad guy. He's vilified. Why? Because he won the president as a Republican. All right? So, I mean, I don't really care what political party you are. If you have things that I agree with, I'm going to vote with you. That, that, that's how it's going to happen. All right? I'm not that one of those flukies who just follows along political lines. Why should we even do that in this country? We should not have political parties to begin with. As I've always quoted the— uh, 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 farewell address by George Washington, where he says that we should be a country who focuses on our country. I'm, I'm just, you know, verbatim. Here. I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not saying it's verbatim. We should be a country that focuses on our country and we should not have political parties because political parties, as we've seen in England, will divide the country. And right now we have a huge division within the country. Why? Because of political parties. Oh, my goodness. I mean, it makes so much sense. If we got rid of political parties, everyone was an independent, then we can all focus and think about the country as a whole. And we can work together without saying, oh, well, you know, this Democrat crossed the line. He crossed the aisle and, and he voted with the Republicans and now he probably won't win re-election because his constituents don't I mean let's be real here people okay well uh, let's look at the, 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 the governor race here in Georgia I received no pamphlets I received no emails or phone calls from the Republican candidate even though I am a registered Republican okay I received everything from Stacey Abrams the Democratic candidate for governor here in Georgia 
Well, I really didn't know anything about her, didn't know anything about him. You know, I wanted to read both sides. I didn't want to sit down on my computer and just have to, you know, see what was going on. So when I got the pamphlet for Stacey Abrams, I read what she was about. Okay. When I got the pamphlet for, um, I can't even remember his name, for the current governor of Georgia, because he won, I went down, got on the computer, I read about what he was about, compared the two. And I voted for Stacey Abrams. I did. I did because I believe that she had, you know, the interest of Georgia at her heart, at her core. Now, some people might say, oh, well, she really didn't. Okay, cool, whatever, she lost. I mean, I don't really care no more. You know, he's the governor, so let's see what he does. You know, and that's the way I felt about Donald Trump. You know, when he won, I was I was I was wishy washy. You know, I was one of those Republicans who was wishy washy about him. I I really wasn't going to vote for Hillary at all, simply because, I mean, I knew what she was going to be about. Many of us did. You know, she was coming from the Obama uh, administration. She was going to be pretty much a clone of what Obama did. Okay, Uh, maybe a little more things here and there. But Donald Trump was bringing something fresh and new to the political scene. Something we had never seen before in the political scene. And and that's the one reason why I did vote for him. So then when everyone started bashing him, and I have friends that continue to bash him to this day, I say, hey, let's just see what he does. Let's give him this opportunity to see what he does. I mean, the first term of a president is normally just trying to do things and undo things or fix things that you saw with a problem with the previous president. That's pretty much what it is. So now we are in, what, year uh, three, since it's 2019, of President Trump. Let's see what happens after this government shutdown ends. It's going to end. Hopefully it ends next week because I've been seeing these pay stubs of workers that has a zero dollars of government workers that has zero dollars on their pay stub. Now, if that's not disheartening, I don't know what is. Why would I even want to go back to that job? I mean, <laughs> let's be real here. I mean, I, I was reading a lot of the uh, government workers who uh, aren't working right now because of the government shutdown have started driving Uber, started doing Lyft, things of that nature, because they have to put food on the table. But no, we must have the Dreamers Act. We must have this uh, border wall because if we do not. Right now, the government, Congress, and the executive branch, the president, does not have the people of the United States' interest at heart. Now, I know some of you say, well, 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 if he just signs his legislation and just just go ahead with it and, and he won't fulfill his campaign promise. Screw the campaign promise. All right. Let's look at what we have here in the United States and let's build off of that. We do have walls at the border, people. OK, people are posting pictures left and right of walls at the border. Do you understand that this border wall, if it, it is constructed the way some people are dreaming it to be constructed with just a straight, long, thick wall across the border of the United States and Mexico, Okay, it will take away land that has been given to Native Americans that has been in families for 300 something years. You know, they will have to use eminent domain to take these lands. So that means that no one's going to get paid. They're just taking the land to build this wall. So let's think of it this way. If someone comes to your neighborhood and says right now, we have to take your house and your land for this highway. Yeah, they're going to pay you for the house. Yeah, they're going to pay you for the land. But now you have to get everything you own within a certain amount of time and try to find somewhere new. This can occur. This 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 might occur to some people along the border of the United States and Mexico when they build this wall. Now, that's just one argument that I've been reading uh, uh, given uh, by some people who are against the wall. Uh, it says that one third of the land needed for the border wall is owned by federal government or Native American tribes. The rest of the land along the U.S.-Mexico border is owned by different states and private property owners. The, ge- the federal government would need to confiscate the land. Some of it passed along the generations and some of it bestowed in the 1700s by Spanish land grants before Texas even became a state. So what are we going to do about it? All right. So, so let's see. Let's see. Uh, here are some options that we can do. Change the legal immigration criteria to favor employability, a.k.a. skills, over family connections. This emphasis would be a stimulant to the nation's economic growth. Does that not make sense? Let's favor skills over family. Just because your cousin or your brother came here to America legally and got great 
education, has a great paying job. Shouldn't he now be able to pay for you to fly here to America and apply for a visa instead of you having to, you know, dig yourself under a wall to get here into America? How about this? How about we require most businesses to belong to E-Verify? You know what E-Verify is? It's the government system that allows employees to check on the immigrant status of potential workers. It also checks on a lot of other things. But why don't we have our businesses require E-Verify? Hmm? If you can verify the citizenship of your employees, then we won't have a problem where, you know, illegal immigrants are taking our jobs. <laughs> How about this? How about we do a, a a a a path, a legal path to being legal here in America? You know, I know we have one already. I know, I know DV Google is like Danish or something, and she, you know, became a citizen somehow through some illegal ways. But I mean, some legal ways. I was correct them, legal ways. <laughs> but for the 11 million undocumented immigrants. That's what I'm talking about. The 11 million undocumented immigrants. How about we create a path for them to become legal? That doesn't entail us having ICE go kick down their doors. How about we just embrace the policies that we already have? Hmm? How about we use the policies effectively that we already have? If that means... Uh, 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 hiring more people, hire more people, train more people. Why don't we do that? Oh, I mean, you know, the United States defense budget is going to be ninety nine uh, hundred billion dollars in the year 2020. Ninety nine hundred billion dollars. That's a lot of money. That is our most uh, expensive department of the government. Now, I know people, oh, our defense budget is so great. We, we, need to, we need to keep our defenses up. You know, we need to have our military strong and mighty and with the newest technology. I don't, I don't disagree with that. But can't we do that with $500 billion? I mean, and then can't we use the other $490 billion to improve our homeland security? I mean, yeah. But again... You know, I, I'm just a, I'm just a regular Joe Schmo who's sitting here yelling into a mic. I don't know what I'm talking about. I really don't. I'm just saying stuff, people. Just trying to keep you entertained with the latest news here in the United States. Because uh, this is this is one thing I want to bring this up real quick. You know, most of the other shows here on uh, DVRadio.net, some of them don't want to touch political topics. They try to stray away from it. I embrace it. I embrace the conflict. I want people to argue with me about. Politics. I want people to argue with me about where America should be going right now in this day and age. Last week, I did a racist show. Why? Why did I do a racism show? Why? Because it seems like for some reason or another, in the land of the free and the home of the brave, we cannot get past the color of someone's skin. That's why I did it. And the reason I like talking politics is because for some reason or another, people cannot get past their political affiliations and see that America should be first. Let's talk about the gun control. You know, House is trying to pass this new legislation where um, they were going to require uh, 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 you know, a comprehensive background check and all this other stuff before you can buy a gun. Okay, I'm cool with that. Why not? Have them pass the background check. But then you got people that's like, oh, well, that's against my constitutional rights. I should not have to have my background subpoenaed before I can buy a gun. Well, why? what are you freaking hiding that you don't want your background subpoenaed? I mean, dude, no one cares when you go for a job interview. Guess what they do? They do a background check. Do you object to that? No, because you need the money. If you want the gun, just do the damn background check, which most states have anyway. So I don't understand why. It's becoming a, fed, a federal mandate to get a background check. I might be wrong. I might be right. Who the hell knows? Right now, I'm just rambling. So with that being said, you have listened to the Marquee Dirty 30 here on DVRadio.net. WDVR. And coming up next is Barracks Talk. I said it again. It's Barracks Talk. And I hope you guys enjoyed the show. If you didn't, let me know. If you did, let me know at Facebook at DV Marquee 
Okay, Google it. Not Google it. Don't Google it. Just go to Facebook. Go to the search bar. Type in DV Spacebar Marquee. All right, it should come up. Or you can email the show at Lima Charlie Radio Show at gmail.com. I told you I'm not changing. I never will change it. And that again, uh, this has been your show. I hope you enjoyed it. See you next week. <laughs>